beautiful people so I'm sure that there have been tutorials or guide videos on the Henschel 129b3 or the dock uh, but here's my take on it anyhow so the dock is a German ground attacker from World War II and it was used mainly on the Eastern Front and in Tunisia there were three major variants of it ranging from the b1 to the b3 but for this video I'm only looking at the uh, Henschel 129B3 which has a 7.5 cm cannon on it and it was called Borg Kanone 7.5 and it had about the same punch as the German anti-tank cannon the Pac-40 So one of the original requirements from the German Air Ministry, the Reichsluftministerium was that the dock was not allowed to use any high priority aircraft engines, so no engines that was to be used in German bombers or fight aircraft. They tried a German low priority engine but it wasn't powerful enough, so they found the French Nomrod, which was uh, well French made since they just occupied France and they took over the production and continued producing those engines. So with the German low powered engine they could barely get it off the ground it did improve some with the French one and it worked okay with the 20mm cannons and the 30mm cannons in the pot underneath but once they equipped the 7.5cm it became very unwieldy and that's actually pretty beautifully if you can call that beautifully simulated in the game because it flies like a brick and one of the major drawbacks with these engines is that I believe this is the only twin engined uh, plane in the game that is not capable of normal flight or keeping the altitude with only one engine. So if you lose one engine, you are going to drop altitude and you are going to crash. There is no way around it. I do not know if this fact is true or not, but apparently the American A-10 has some ideas taken from this plane because it had a bathtub of steel here and the pilot was pretty much protected up until his neck in this uh, steel bathtub and the cockpit is situated far front of the fuselage to give the pilot the best chance to identify and attack its targets. When we talk about modifications for the Henschel, there's really only one modification you need to concentrate on, and that is the new 75mm cannon. And on that modification there's only one line we need to concentrate on, and that is the reduced weapon spread at 500 meters. Now those 2.8 meters, that's pretty much half the length of an entire tank. And that is really hit or miss. And you can clearly see, if you have not spaded it yet, that sometimes your shots go all over the place. And even if you're dead center and maybe 3 or 400 meters away, you are still able to miss because of that missing modification. So forget all the other modifications and work only to get the new cannon. From then on you can pretty much do what you want, but I do suggest you pick survivability next. The plane is pretty tough and everything helps to keep you in the air. With the 75mm gun you have access to three different kinds of shell. 
First one, you have the armor piercing high explosive shell. Then you have the high velocity armor piercing tracer shell. And lastly, the high explosive incendiary tracer shell. Now you would think that the ones for the armor targets is the best one. It has a faster or higher mod velocity and it can go through more armor. But it does not have an explosive filler. So that means when you penetrate the armor, there's a chance that nothing happens except for the modules that you hit initially and that's it. However, if you choose the default one, the armor piece and explosive shell, it does have reduced armor penetration, but it's still enough. And it has the explosive filler. And that makes all the difference. With explosive filler, there's a high chance that you will detonate whatever ammunition is stored inside, meaning that you're going to one-shot the tank. I would not bother with the one for the ground targets, the high explosive one. You pretty much don't use it for anything. So just pretend that it didn't exist. Except for the gun, what makes this plane unique is access to the telescopic sight. So you access it by hitting the toggle view key, and once you are in the copy view, hit it one more time, and there you go. And let's try stop right here for a second. I don't know if you noticed in the loader screen that I set my gun conversion to 400 meters, and this is why. From the outer ring to the first vertical line, and from that one to the next, and from that one to the center. Those have equal spacings. And if you look at the tank, that one is 400 meters away. So at 400 meters, if the tank were at the center of the reticle, you would pretty much hit it dead center. It's of course not pinpoint accurate, but it's close enough. And with that distance known, it's now much easier for you to either aim higher or lower in order to score a hit. I mentioned earlier that the HVAP, the high velocity armor piercing ammunition, was not the way to go. And this is what I mean. Let's see how many shots it takes for me to take out this T-34. So six hits, one hit the tracks and did damage, there was one who ricocheted but still did internal damage, one destroyed the turret ring or at least damaged it, and three penetrated the hull and turret itself. That still accounts for 50% of my total ammunition and that's just not good enough. So let's try the same exercise with the default shell, the armor piercing high explosive shell. So between 1 and 3 rounds to kill a tank with a high explosive armor piercing shell. I know there was a little deviation where I attacked from a high altitude this time so I got a little better angle. But still, I don't know if you noticed that, but once I penetrated the hull, there were many more of those tiny red balls representing fragmentation. 
so the shell's high explosive component definitely did its job by spreading a lot more fragments all over the interior of the tank. Since we do have this sniper scope feature, let's try to see how far out I reliably can hit and kill a tank. So the first shot was a miss, and the second I got a kill on around 900 meters. So that kill was around 1200 meters. And that was about a 1700 meter kill. At range further out it started to get really inconsistent as the target was hard to spot so I stopped around here. But it surely proves that you can use the dog as a long range sniper. You of course don't need to use the telescopic sight or sniper scope or whatever you want to call it. It's just a nice option and a unique option to this plane but you can easily do it without. Flight performance, or lack thereof, or is it really? You can argue that it does its job perfectly. Yes, it is slow, but you can always keep yourself alive by being slow. I don't know how many times I've survived in this plane, especially in an ARB, where fighters are coming screaming down from the top cover just to overshoot you or end up killing themselves in the ground because they compress and can't pull out again. I'm not really sure if pun is intended or not here. I know this is not relevant, but it's still the same platform. Now, on the Henschel B2 version, with a 30mm gun port, and the two 20mm and your two light machine guns, if somebody overshoots you and turns in front of you, you in a matter of a split second turn them into your bitch. But back on the topic on the B3. Since you cannot outrun anything at all, your best defensive move is to keep as slow as you can while making as many aggressive maneuvers as you can. Often, I would say 90% of the time they overshoot you and they have to turn around and everything takes time. And often you have time to hopefully either run back to a friendly SPAGs or your base or hopefully a friendly fighter or attacker will see you frantically typing in chat or hear you crying out in voice commands for help. So if you play smart, there's a chance that you can actually come out of this alive and turn your disadvantage into advantage. The War Thunder Wiki on the plane says that you're losing your flaps at 314 km an hour and that's definitely true at 321 km an hour. So be mindful of that when you're doing defensive maneuvering. So how do we get into the dock in the first place? Now the fastest method I would say is grab the Puma, go grab some capture points, scout a few targets and get a couple of kills and that should be enough. Especially with intelligence that does help a lot because once you scout them and they have been killed by intelligence some other guy besides you kills them you are getting points deducted from your total amount needed to spawn in a plane and that's very useful I have noticed that the matches some sort of have a rhythm to them. It usually takes a couple of minutes and then people have gathered enough spawn points in order to spawn in the first planes. And usually I try to avoid spawning in the dock at that stage. It just seems to be a little more of a gamble. If you are on the German side, 
That first wave usually contains the Stukas who just wants to uh, get a quick suicide kill or revenge kill. And I suggest those German dive bomber pilots and dive bomber pilots from other nations go watch my video about how to dive bomb in a Stuka. Now that technique also applies to other dive bombers, so go watch that video and get yourself out alive instead of just crashing into the ground. But anyhow, after that first wave have either killed each other or killed themselves, usually there's a bigger lull in the game and then we're getting to the mid and to the last part of the game. And that's where you see a bunch of players again spawning into aircraft. Especially, and I don't even know why, the losing side has a tendency to spawn in a lot of planes. But the thing is, and there is a thing, that if you don't follow that group and just keep on spawning in tanks, there's a much bigger chance that you can turn around the game instead of just getting one or two kills and then get shot down by some AAA or an enemy fighter. So anyhow, I would say the mid game is the best time to spawn in the dock. There's still plenty of targets to kill and usually at that point there's a lot of back and forth between capturing and uh, losing points. So once airborne, the first thing I usually do is try to orientate me on the map. So for instance, if we are south and they are north, I always try to attack east-west or west-east, pretty much perpendicular to the front line. If you do it that way, you'll most likely face the tanks from the side, which makes a much easier and larger target to aim at. Before you start your initial attack, I would suggest you get up to around 6 or 700 meters. This shouldn't be an issue since you start about 1 km in height whenever you start a match. That way you'll have a good situational awareness so you can figure out where your units are and where the enemy units are. And you'll also get a chance to scout for enemy planes which are going to be your nemesis. That and SPAGs of course. And once you find a tank or the XPAG to attack, see if you can attack from a height at at least 400 meters or so. That will, you'll still have a good angle on his or her armor whenever you're attacking. And especially a tank like a T-34, it's pretty easy to attack with a sloped armor. Because the angle you're attacking at almost makes the armor flat. And we all know since that they slope the armor, they can get away with reducing the overall thickness of armor plate. While if you're attacking, let's say a uh, Sherman from a steep angle, there's a bigger chance that you will actually ricochet on the side. So if you do that, it's better to aim, if possible, at the engine deck or the top of the turret. But we're talking about pretty precise aiming like that, and often in the heat of battle, it's very difficult to get a clean shot. Oh, and by the way, I will say that what happens right now on the screen is very rare that you're actually uh, able to uh, kill on another plane with uh, the B3 because it does uh, turn like a truck and uh, your only offensive options except for the 75mm are only two rifle caliber machine guns. So, yay me. So this is again one of those maps where I uh, fly perpendicular to the front line, so to speak. As usually, check out, you know, Alpha Bravo Charlie, just a quick overview. And I didn't find anything on B, but there was plenty of activity on C. And I started out around 700-800 meters and I got a quick kill and I got a crit on the second one. Uh, the second guy, he became pretty upset also because we just had a Stuka um, bombing the crap out of that group. And I wanted to do another quick run on the same two or three tanks that were standing in the cluster. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to take it, the Stuka just dropped a bomb. He uh, completely obscured my view, so I had to uh, abort a deck attack run.
I want to mention something else about those French engines. You can pretty much uh, wave all day long or for several minutes at a time without overheating. It's a small plus, but it's a plus. And here I got uh, some pretty nice uh, kills. A quick double kill. And again, this was what I was talking about. If you attack perpendicular to the main battle zone, you'll sometimes be able to get something like this where you get very nice and easy flanking shot. And of course, we I was always lucky with uh, the weather this time. So it was clear, you could see for miles, no snow, no rain, no fog, no nothing. Now, at this point, I kind of knew that after having uh, gotten three quick kills, I was about in for some revenge killing time. And I was looked back, looking back, and I saw that pretty much all our planes were gone. And yeah, back there in the horizon, two planes had spawned. And I'm pretty sure they wanted to uh, get some uh, Hinchel tail. So I decided to uh, boogie down towards our air spawn because I then I could uh, resupply anyhow and since I was the only playing up I didn't see any reason just to give them a quick and easy kill and um, yep there is one of them already on my tail And he uh, basically committed suicide. I think he forgot that he needs to be at around 3,000 3, meters in order to be safe from the airfields uh, and aircraft guns. And he was uh, maybe about 1,500 meters up tops, if that. And I pressed the engines until they were red just to uh, get out of his range. And it, it was kind of a weak move on the one hand to uh, lure him into the anti-aircraft artillery like that, but then again he could just have waited over the battlefield because I would have returned anyhow. But uh, seeing he went down like he did, I started not to uh, start landing just because it takes several minutes uh, until you're up and over the battlefield again. And as I turned around, I think four additional planes had just decided to spawn in. One, two, three. I think there was a fourth at some point. So I decided to head back again. And the team was pretty much overrun, but at least I managed to get one last kill before the whole team was pretty much wiped out. I ended up being shut down, so unfortunately I did not get that elusive uh, ace with the dog and its uh, main cannon. But I'll get it at some point. So the last match I'm going to show was on the Poland map. I again just used the Puma and I captured B and uh, I got a kill and then I got uh, overrun and murdered on the B point right after having saved, uh, saved a fellow uh, Puma so as you can see we just captured all the points but the match is still very young and again I tried to fly perpendicular to the whole battle but a city as such is not the best hunting ground for the dog, so I saw a couple of uh, marked targets over the ridge line. I think it was one of our pumas who so graciously marked them for me. And uh, of course I uh, used that advantage. And there we go. Just having done that segment on long range shooting, I got that kill. I think that was about eight or nine hundred meters out, so I was super happy to have that. So I was super happy about that kill. And I was also happy that I kept my uh, altitude up this time anyhow. So I was around 400 meters up. So more tanks were targeted or targeted. Had been targeted, thank you. 
And this was a KV2. Now this one was more of a challenge to crack. I did get a couple of good hits on him, especially I got a good hit on his uh, big turret and I knocked out all of the crew pretty much. So at least he's going to be less of a nuisance and he already has our over 40 second reload time. So that's definitely going to uh, be a minute plus with uh, that hit on the crew. There was a couple of uh, anti-aircraft batteries that had uh, started opening up, people started to spawn them in. But luckily we had other players up in planes and a couple of them were fighters who uh, took care of those anti-aircraft for me. And I was giving them a lot of birth, but unfortunately they were pretty much where my hunting ground was, there was not really much I could do. Now that bomb from BF-109 I thought actually killed both of them, but it didn't and I got a good kill on a KV-1 from the side. I was pretty low, so I managed to get him straight in the side. Now usually you can attack in two different ways with a dog. You can either go side to side like I do in those 3 or 400 meter sides or even less. Or you can kind of do yo-yos where you uh, do more uh, topside attacks. But there were so many players here and so many aircraft, I just didn't dare to do it. Got a hit on a Swedish anti-aircraft weapon with a 75, didn't take him out, but I finished him off afterwards. Those are one of the rare reasons uh, or rare opportunities where I actually get to use my uh, two uh, rifle caliber machine guns. And that's the only thing you can really use them for, either mark targets or kill SPAGs. I wanted to let the area cool down a little, so uh, I got a little more of a distance before I turned back in again. And I wanted to cool off those engines too, because I've been webbing all the time. I got an enemy kill assist, that was on the KV-2, which I... Uh, Hit in the turret earlier. But we had uh, definitely overtaken this match, so time was kind of running out. And I want to see if I can get at least one more kill in. So already people had left the game and stopped spawning in. But I was lucky to find a lone uh, anti-aircraft, another Swedish 3.71. Missed a shot too short, but the second one was a perfect hit, center mass, and uh, I think I ammo racked him. Uh, he definitely blew up in a very pretty explosion. So now it really, really got interesting. I was four kills in yet again. And I was wanting to get that last kill in, I really wanted to get that uh, ace if I could do it. And this was one of those rare opportunities where a game like this presents itself. Usually I could shut down after one or two kills. And now I got really, really close. Miss, I got a hit on him, stopped his engine, and then, ta-da! I did it just seconds before the match ended. I managed to get myself an ace in the dock. So I was super happy and it also got a first place and a pretty nice amount of uh, silver lines in the process. So with that nice ending, I want to stop this video. Thank you for watching and have a good one.